Throughout the history of mankind, the divine messages are often shrouded in mystery. Prophets, messiahs, or whichever names you call them, are often persecuted and oppressed, their words obscured. But how do we distinguish the true from the false? To do so, one can only rely on the divine's guidance, and the truth will reveal itself to those who earnestly seek it. Throughout the ancient land of Europe, folk tales abound that share one fascinating theme. A great hero, often a king, does not die but instead lies asleep. He awaits a special time when he is to return. This type of folk tale is called the King Asleep in the Mountain or Sleeping Hero. And sometimes the king is waiting for his return along with his army, waiting to bring justice to his people in their hour of need. Sometimes this hero is the German King Frederick I, Emperor Charlemagne, or the legendary knight Ogier the Dane. Other times he is King Marco of Serbia, or Saint Wenceslas, the Duke of Bohemia. Perhaps the most famous of them all is King Arthur, the once and future king. Believed to have lived during the 5th to 6th centuries, His Majesty King Arthur was a strong, wise and inspiring High King above all kings of the land. King Arthur presided over a knightly fellowship of the Round Table. As the only one able to pull out the sword and the stone, the rightful sovereign united all of Britain with the help of the powerful magician Merlin. Medieval tales say that King Arthur, who suffered a fatal wound, did not die, but fell into a deep slumber in Avalon, a mystical place ruled by the Lady of the Lake. He is destined to return when Albion, referring to ancient Britain, needs him most. Plenty of books, films, television series, etc. have kept this story alive in our minds. Though no man, no matter how great, can know his destiny, some lives have been foretold, Merlin. Arthur is not just a king. He is the once and future king. Take heart, for when Albion's need is greatest, Arthur will rise again. Welsh mythology also tells about King Arthur. It is said that he is sleeping in a cave with his knights, waiting for the call to rise up to save Britain. A number of caves are claimed to be their resting place. King Arthur's return is also recorded in the most influential of Arthurian works, Le Mort de Arthur compiled by the 15th century writer Sir Thomas Mallory. Yet some men say in many parts of England that King Arthur is not dead, but had, by the will of our Lord Jesus, gone into another place. And men say that he shall come again, and he shall win the Holy Cross. Many men say that there is written upon his tomb this verse, Ic jacet oturus rexquandam 
Rexke Futurus, meaning, Here lies Arthur, the once and future king. Here, we notice that King Arthur is portrayed as a Christ-like being who will come again, and when he does, he shall win the Holy Cross. This seems to suggest that when King Arthur does return, his task will be to accomplish a spiritual mission. In 2017, while treating Supreme Master Television team members to viewing BBC's popular television series Merlin, Supreme Master Ching Hai revealed a wonderful secret about who King Arthur is in this lifetime. And this Merlin was one of your brothers. Reincarnated. Hi, Tuha. Oh, wow. Therefore, I want you to watch it. Okay? Thank you, Mr. You know who the prince is? What a thrill it was to discover that Prince Arthur, who later becomes king, has finally returned as our beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai thus fulfilling the legendary prophecy of the once and future king. Supreme Master Ching Hai also shared some insights about King Arthur, that he was very kind and compassionate, a vegetarian, and also a meditator in search of the Holy Grail. In the literature, King Arthur sends out his knights on a quest to find the Holy Grail. Often regarded as the cup that Lord Jesus Christ drank from at the Last Supper, the Holy Grail is a symbol of the key to eternal life and everlasting happiness. In this lifetime, Supreme Master Ching Hai indeed obtained the Holy Grail, the key of spiritual enlightenment. In the Himalayas, and has since been sharing this precious gift with those who sincerely seek it. Also, King Arthur's round table gave every individual equal respect, a concept far ahead of his time. Today, Master treats all her disciples most fairly and graciously. It does not matter whether they are rich or poor or from which country. She never gives personal privileges to her family members. Master has also come during the greatest time of humanity's need. With chaotic events all around us, and Albion, Britain, is included in this. Some versions of the legend say that King Arthur will return to once again rescue his people from the attack of the Anglo-Saxons. In his time, the Anglo-Saxons were the people's largest threat and enemy. In the present day, we can say that the mission is again to save people from their biggest enemy. We all have one 
common enemy, the devil, that's trying to separate us, that's I'm trying to ingrain, uh, you know, negative thinking or warlike thinking, uh, killing idea in our head, and and harming each other and warring with each other and quarreling with each other. This is the only enemy we have, the devil. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Satan, Maya, mm. and their subordinates. We all have one enemy, that is the evil, and that has driven us to eat meat and to sin. Therefore, we have this consequence, so we have to unite together, recognize all that, and stop that. Stop from the root, not watering water from the leaves, but water the tree from the root. The root cause is the wicked way, the devil's way, evil way that we treat other beings, innocent, helpless, harmless, and helpful beings. Yes. Intelligent beings, benevolent beings, wise beings, our helpers, our teachers, our friends, our benefactors, the animals. That's the root of all this problem in the world, of all ills, war. Leading his people through danger-filled times, King Arthur once united all of Britain to bring about peace. Today, Master is uniting everyone for world peace, leaders and citizens alike. If we are friendly to people, to all beings, every people, every being, then no war in this world. So we begin today our peace program. Everybody talks about peace and they make a lot of fuss and they go to a big hotel and sit on a big table and talk about peace. And we go nowhere with this talk. We must begin by action. We must begin by withdrawing from killing. We must begin to protect our life as much as our ability can. Peace begins with us, with me, with you. And then Peace will be in the whole world. Therefore, I think if we meditate and we minimize our intake of meat, then we'll become more peaceful within ourselves. And because we are more peaceful, we will radiate a kind of invisible, peaceful atmosphere around us, which affects everybody. And we do not talk about peace Peace will be. We don't have to advocate peace. Peace will be. In our world, if we kill somebody, it's called murder, eh? murdering, and then we have to go to jail and all that. But we kill billions, trillions, zillions of animals every day, and nobody puts us in jail. Isn't that amazing? And the animals are helpless. The fearful living with us, fearful every day. How can this be? How can this be a world like this? How can it be that we make ourselves into such a fearful, vicious kind of being, feared by all other creatures, by all of them, and even ourselves, our brothers and sisters, human beings, we made them fear also, yeah? By power, by guns, by atomic weapons, by economic sanction, all kinds of things, all kinds of things. We put fear on each other's lives. How do we call ourselves the crown of the creation? That I don't know. I don't know what kind of crown that we merit to put on our head. And I don't know who would put that crown on our head. Huh? So let's wish that these things will happen again, and the human beings, all of them, will wake up to their noble intention inside their heart. Before they were born, or when they were just born, they were noble, pure, heroic. So let's hope that the human beings will awaken within themselves these superior qualities which make us the crown of the creation 
let them wake it up, wake them up, and then we will be all in heaven, really. If no more killing, this planet shall be heaven. God is dictating my hand as prayers surge within my heart for a world vegan so that we will have lasting world peace for all on earth. Please pray to God and do your part. You can. You have the power to lead world citizens into the right way of life, pleasing heavens and earth and all that live. Because without world vegan, there will not be lasting world peace. That's why I ask people to pray and meditate only for world vegan. And world peace also comes along. The more world vegan now, the more world peace. You see that? Yeah. 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 But it should be more lasting. Every peaceful plan will be done. North Korean leader has ever done it. Kim Jong-un stepping into South Korea with a handshake for its President Moon. And holding hands, the two stepped briefly into North Korea. The United States and the Taliban have signed an agreement aimed at ending nearly two decades of conflict in Afghanistan. Peace is breaking out. This really is a historical event. This display of goodwill has people celebrating two rivals embracing peace, declaring an end to the state of war. An embrace 27 years in the making, the prime ministers of Greece and Macedonia resolving their country's differences, not just in name, also in deed. Earlier, Qatar's Emir, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, was greeted by the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman with an embrace. Peace is the most important thing we have for the transitional period and without it, all the talks about democratic transition, economic development is not possible. This is a very important development. We have common historical and cultural values with Egypt. This will be a very warm peace. The light of peace on this Hanukkah day has never shone brighter than today in the Middle East. I loudly pledged a new approach. Great nations do not fight endless wars. Etc. Every peaceful plan will be done. Finally, we would like to share one more revelation supporting the truth that Supreme Master Ching Hai is the once and future king who is ever ready to help Britain in her time of need. And that is, two of Supreme Master Ching Hai's past incarnations in the United Kingdom were Queen Elizabeth I and Queen Victoria. In the mid-16th century, Queen Elizabeth I had inherited a weakened kingdom during an uncertain time of religious division and foreign threats. Yet, she capably established a golden age of stability, peace and prosperity known as the Elizabethan era. Later, in the 1800s, Queen Victoria used her influence to support peace and reconciliation in foreign affairs. Her long reign, celebrated as the Victorian era, saw the British Empire at its strongest, plus extraordinary progress in science, technology and medicine, as well as intellectual and cultural achievements that have shaped Britain as a leading country. 
Thus, King Arthur had faithfully returned, not just once, but multiple times to lift up his beloved people. He has always been the once and future king. Master has once disclosed that one of her extra manifestation bodies is presently in England as one of the good top leaders in the government, but it is not convenient to reveal further. Thank you, gracious viewers, for joining us today. 